The following broadcast is brought to you by the friends and partners of Revival Ministries International. Take your Bibles and go with me if you would, please. I still can't get away from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 2. And you know me, when I'm on something, I'm going to stay with it. The title of my message this morning called, Wise Men Still Seek Him. How many wise are here today? Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod, the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east that is rising, and we've come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was disturbed and troubled, and the whole of Jerusalem with him. So he called together all the chief priests and the learned men, the scribes of the people, and anxiously asked them where the Christ is to be born. And they replied, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet, In you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, you're not in any way least or insignificant among the chief cities of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler, a leader, who will govern and shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod sent for the wise men and secretly and accurately to the last point, ascertained from them the time of the appearing of the star. That is how long the star had been made itself visible since its rising. And then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search for the child carefully and diligently. And when you found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. When they listened to the king, they went their way, and behold, the star which they had seen in the east in its rising went before them until it came and stood over the place where the young child was. And when they saw the star, they were thrilled with ecstatic joy. And going on in the house, they saw the child with Mary's mother. They fell down and worshiped him, then opened their treasure bags and presented him gifts of gold frankincense, and myrrh. And receiving an answer to the asking, they were divinely instructed and warned in a dream not to go back to Herod. So they departed to their own country by a different way. Now after they were gone, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, get up tenderly, take unto you the young child and his mother and flee to Egypt and remain there Till I tell you otherwise, for Herod's intent is to search for the child in order to destroy him. And having risen, he took the child, his mother, by night and withdrew to Egypt and remained there until Herod's death. This was fulfilled what the Lord had spoken by the prophets. Out of Egypt have I called my son. Then Herod, when he realized he had been misled by the wise men, was furiously enraged. And he sent to put to death all the male children in Bethlehem and in all that territory who were two years old and younger, reckoning according to the date which he had investigated diligently and learned exactly from the wise men. Then was fulfilled what was spoken by the prophet Jeremiah, and the voice was heard in Ramah, wailing in loud lamentation, Rachel weeping for her children. She refused to be comforted because there were no more. But when Herod died, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared in the dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Rise, tenderly take unto you the child and his mother and go to the land of Israel. For those who sought the child's life are dead. Then he woke and arose and tenderly took the child and his mother and came to the land of Israel. And because he heard of Archelaus was ruling over Judea in the place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. But being divinely warned in a dream, he withdrew to the region of Galilee And he went and dwelt in a town called Nazareth. And so was spoken to the prophet that might be fulfilled. He shall be called a Nazarene, a separated one. Now, the points I want to go through with you here. First of all, wise men still seek him. We have wise people that have come on the Sunday morning where you could be somewhere else, but you chose to come and set it aside. Other people are doing other things because that's what they think is more important. But when we know that fellowshipping and worship 
is important we put it first place. The Bible tells us, don't forsake the gathering of yourselves together. Even that more, when you see the day approaching, Jesus is coming very soon. We're so close to the end now. And it's imperative that people have a place of worship and where they can come and fellowship with the family, with the body of Christ. You can't be a law to yourself and you can't just be on your own. If you're on your own, you could die in your house and nobody would know you were dead. They would find your bodies a week or two or three, four later because nobody knows you. So don't be a loner. Be connected. It says they were filled with ecstatic joy. This whole Christmas message is about joy to the world. And this is not just the Christmas message, it's the Christian message. Our message is a message of great joy, even in the face of total opposition, even in the place where people persecute you or revile you or make up all kinds of things about you. That joy of the Lord that the Bible says is your strength, that joy that will sustain you, that will carry you. They came to worship. We always have to keep ourselves in that place of worship because if you don't, you become a cynic. And cynics don't worship. All they do is criticize. Cynic, cynics sit and judge, criticize. Now, I've been around church. I know how church should be. They did this wrong, that wrong. Worshippers are too busy worshiping to worry about what's wrong and what's, what's missing. Are you with me? So be very careful that the devil doesn't trap you into a place of cynicism and where you stop worshiping. Always keep worship your number one thing. They came to worship. They did not come empty handed, never ever. And of course I know this church is not like that but in many places we go people, they come empty handed to the things of God. Always bring an offering of the Lord and to the Lord. Can you say amen? You know, whenever we go meet men and women of God, we always carry something with us. I've never gone to go meet any of the men and women of God and just show up there just with nothing. I always bring something. I always pray before I go. This is just the way that I've always been. They brought gifts fit for a king. So as I told you last week, these were not gifts bought down at the dollar store. These were gifts from a king to a king. And what's so Amazing about this is that they came and in their worship, they fell down and they opened their treasure bags and that was all part of their worship. Are you with me? So people don't see that as worship. It is worship. Then they received divine instructions. They received an answer to their asking. So one of the things that we can do when we come worshiping, when we come around these presents, we can always come and place a demand upon the anointing and say, God, today I'm going to worship you. Today I come, I open my treasure bags. But Lord, I need divine instruction from you. And I'm believing that I'm going to receive divine instruction from you concerning my personal life, concerning my work, my business, concerning the future, what I'm about to do. Speak to me. Speak to me in the night hours, speak to me in a dream and God will come and speak to you and you'll receive divine instruction. Can you say amen? amen? Well, they obviously had asked God what to do and the Lord spoke to them in a dream to go back another way. Otherwise, they would have run foul of Herod and probably would have ended up losing their life. Second Peter 2 and 9, the Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust under the day of judgment to be punished. Now, what people have to realize that when Jesus escaped from Herod and went to live in Egypt, that it was the wise men that actually facilitated financially for him to make that journey. It's the wise men today that continually facilitate the gospel being carried. Can you say amen? Can you imagine being the one that, I, you know, I was able to fund Jesus and his family as they left and go wait out until Herod died. 
So the wise men gifts funded the family. By their gifts, they provided both provision and protection for Jesus and his family. By their worship and their giving, they became facilitators of the gospel. So what does that tell me? That tells me we're all a part of it. Can you say amen? We're all a part of it. Somebody say, well, I'm not a major part. Yeah, but every part helps. Amen. Amen. Every little bit helps. Every little bit helps. I heard the story of Mr. Little Bit. Mr. Little Bit lived in a little bit house with two little bit children, three little bit cats, two little bit dogs at the foot of a little bit mountain in a little bit town. And a man walked up to him and said, Mr. Little Bit, how do you and Mr. Little Bit and your two little bit kids, three little bit cats, two little bit dogs live in your little bit house, a little bit street, at the foot of a little bit mountain and a little bit town? How do you ever make it? He smiled and said, oh, that's very easy. He said, every little bit helps. <laughs> so it's everyone that's a part of. Everyone that's a part of. We can never look at what our contribution is and say because it's not equivalent to somebody else's, therefore I might as well not even be involved. Because everyone is involved in proportion to that which God has entrusted to them. And God rewards everyone in proportion to that which he has entrusted to you. Can you say amen? So I'm so happy to report to you today that there are wise men that are still seeking him and they came here today. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Proverbs 11 and verse 30, the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life and he that winneth souls is wise. So I can prove to you right now that we have wise people that have filled this place because we have soul winners in this place. Amen. He who wins souls is wise. How many soul winners are in this place? Therefore, we have a room full of wise people People. I don't know about you, but right now as I stand here, I am filled with ecstatic joy. Somebody said, I don't understand that. You, you don't look like it. No, it's exploding on the inside of me. I'm running around on the inside doing somersaults. Some have said, what are you doing? Nothing, just looking. <laughs> what does that make people nervous? Because I'm just standing, just walking along. Somebody's watching on television. What's he doing now? Nothing. Now, I understand that the world will think that we're crazy. I understand that. But, I mean, you go, let's think about what they do for a moment. Come on, let's just think about what the world does for a moment. They go out to a club. Now, I can't even, <laughs> I've never been to one, so I wouldn't even know what they do. But, you know, I, I just know it's a lonely day, you know, and it's a lonely road. <laughs> Because I heard the music that they play. And it's always terrible music about somebody that stole their wife and <laughs> they lost their car and the dog ran away. And I remember sitting in one of these um, 
one of these roadhouses, you know, where you've got the peanuts, you throw them on the floor, remember that? And I hear every note, you know, I hear music because I'm a musician. I hear, I hear, and I'm listening to the song. People are talking, but I'm listening to the song. And I said, that's the most terrible song I've ever heard in my life. And it was about somebody who was rubber-dubbing in his tub, sleeping in his bed, <laughs> scratching his dog's head, watching his TV. Can you imagine? No wonder people drink just to drown the sorrow of the whole thing. And it was a whole song. Somebody's rubber dubbing in my tub, sleeping in my bed, watching my TV, scratching my dog's head. What? What kind of a man allows somebody else to rubber dub in his tub, to sleep in his bed? No, and, and then the world always looked like they're having a great time. This is a great time. I promise you, a hangover is not a great time. Hugging the toilet bowl at the end of the night, holding your face against the toilet bowl because it's cool. <laughs> Putting your face where you normally put your butt. <laughs> That's not having a good time. I don't care what anybody says. Hurling your guts out is not, <laughs> is not having a good time. Being blind, drunk, you don't even know who the person is you're with. And then you find out that you got married. <laughs> at Bubba's Love Chapel. And they lied to you because they told you whatever happened in Vegas stayed in Vegas. But it didn't, it followed you home. <laughs> and now she's there with you and brought her family. It's when a sign on the side of the road, divorce, $359, looks good. Somebody grab that number. <coughs> I can get me a divorce for $359. I don't even know her. They said we were married. I must have been that drunk. So trust me, that's not a good time. The world's trying everything to have a good time. I can think of a lot of things to say right now, but I just need to be careful. <laughs> so the whole world's running looking for joy. You can go down to Disney World. It's supposed to be the happiest place on the earth, Magic Kingdom, everybody's trying to find. But at the end of the day, if you ride, when you ride the train going back, everybody's just like tired out, kids are wiped out. They all got that little thing that probably broke, you know, in the park. And, It doesn't matter how much money you spend, you still can't, you know, you can, you can feel an emotion, but at the end of the day, it's gone. At the end of the day, when you're lying down in your bed, it's just you and yourself and nothing changed except you're poorer. I'm just being very uh, careful here yeah, what I'll say. Happiness is based on circumstances. Joy is not. 
It's the fruit of the Spirit. You can have joy in the middle of the worst circumstances of life. How do I know where you're headed? I can remember the day after Kelly went home, people called. We had ministers call us from all over the world. I, you know, Joyce Michaels, Rodney, it's Joyce. Hi, Joyce. I always try, you know, praying for you. Well, Joyce is not over yet. You know, I'm, I'm afraid. We're going to believe God raised her from the dead. Oh, I can see I didn't need to call. You know how Joyce is. No, no, you needed to call. Thank you for calling, but it's not over yet. So people called us to encourage us, and we were encouraging them. <laughs> Seriously. In the middle of the worst circumstances, you can be encouraged. Amen. <laughs> Ecstatic joy. You know, the, the devil knows if he can steal your joy, he can steal everything that you have. But if he can't take your joy, he can't touch you. Impossible. Impossible. A person that is filled with this joy, and I'm, I'm talking about the royal, the the bokam pastam brakisto rikeya, rahamba ahasokokeya, riko sta bragastombo. I'm no brovon de lesia. I'm not talking about a joy that the world gives. I'm talking about a joy that heaven gives. A person that receives the joy that heaven gives is a person that will be sustained all the days of their life. Yes. And they'll be worshipers. Worshipers are happy people. I've never found true worshipers that were sad. You know, because to, to worship, you have to humble yourself. Arrogant people don't worship. When you worship, you're humbling yourself because you acknowledge the greatness of God. Arrogant people won't worship. They just look at the words. And when you worship him, it's not one-sided. You bless him, he blesses you. You bless him, he blesses you. You say, I'm going to bless you more. He blesses you more. Amen. Amen. I can remember driving down the road and I, there was a worship, I had a worship, at this time it was a tape before the CDs came out. Worship tape in the car and I was just worshiping God and the anointing was so strong, I'm just tears rolling down my cheeks and I'm driving along I said, Lord, you just bless me, you bless me so much. And then I heard him say, and son, you bless me, you bless me so much. And then I, I like snapped out of it. What do you mean? What do you mean I bless you? How do I bless you? He said, you travel around the world. Tell people how great I am, how awesome I am. You bless me. And then I thought of the scripture that said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be continuing to be in my mouth. I got so excited about it. I said, I'm going to bless your socks off. I don't know if you wear socks, but I'm going to bless your socks off. And I'm going to bless God today. I'm going to bless you more than you've ever been blessed before. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless you now. I'll bless you in the morning. I'll bless you in the noontime. I'll bless you in the evening. I'll bless you in my bed. I'll bless you in the midnight hour. I bless you in the middle of the storm. I will worship you. I will praise you. I will glorify you. And so, obviously, we don't come empty handed. By faith, this is what I want to tell you between now and the end of the year, especially coming up to our end of the year service, that we believe that you're going to receive divine instruction and direction for 2018. When we do this, we are protecting the gospel message. We're keeping it pure. We're not putting any GMOs into it. Yes. We're not genetically modifying this message. We're not watering it down, trying to make it palatable. We're preaching it straight. We're preaching it strong. We're keeping it real. Amen. Amen. We're laying it out there. And lives are being touched and changed and transformed by our worship and our giving. We are just like the wise men in days of old. We are facilitators of this great gospel message. 
And let me close with this. You know, a lot of people look for their returns here on the earth. I heard the story of American missionary that had been in Africa for 60 years. He came back off of the field. I believe it was the state of Tennessee. He went into this church, thousands of people. And he sat there and the young pastor was 35 years of age. And he looked at this pastor and he said to the Lord, he said, Lord, I've served you faithfully for 60 years. He said, I have actually nothing to show in the natural other than what is left in Africa. And he said, I'm here and I basically have nothing. And look at this kid, 35, he's got everything. And the Lord said to him, well, son, your reward, your reward waits for you. For some, they receive their reward now, and others, their reward waits. If I, if I said to you, would you like all your reward now, or do you want a little bit now, maybe a tithe, to let God give you a tithe of your reward now, and the other 90 wait, who would prefer the majority to be received on the other side? So that's what people don't understand. You know, the day's going to come when we're going to get to meet the wise men. And I'm going to say, you guys, amazing. We sing about you all the time. We thought there were three of you, but we see they're not. There's seven. Because everybody, we three kings of Orindon, it doesn't say there were three. There were three gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. It doesn't say there were three wise men. There were three gifts. But there could have been seven wise men. Hello. Think about it. Everybody says, we three kings of Ori and all. They're looking over at the banners again. They forgot about me. I was number seven. So we get to heaven, we get to meet them. And then you might think what I'm about to tell you is crazy. When we look down, or when they look down over the banister of heaven, they're looking at us saying, if only we could have lived in 2017 to carry what these people are carrying. Don't they know what they have? Don't these people know what has been entrusted to them? You looking back and saying, if only I could have lived in the day of... Well, this is how they do it. If only we could have lived in Bible days. If we could have lived in, if we could have lived in the days of Jesus, when Jesus walked the earth, and lived in the days of Matthew and Mark and Luke and John, wouldn't that have just been wonderful? And Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are going. If only we could have just lived in the days. No, I'm not saying they did that. But if only we could live in the days of Rodney and of Derek and of David. And of Rod, and of Dale and Lucy, if only we could have lived in those days. Everybody else wants to live in everybody else's day. Just live in your day. Today is the day. The day of victory. The day of rejoicing. The day of his blessings, the day of his abundance, the day of his goodness, the day of his grace, the day of his mercy, the day of his loving kindness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I preach myself happy. I'm so glad I came. Don't step on my red suede shoes. You can tie me down. Stamp on my face, slander my name all over the place. And just don't touch my red suede shoes. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. I think I'm drunk. I think I'm drunk. It's like that song. <laughs> that was written in the Welsh 
The first world survival, 1856. The foolish world around me sage thinks I'm drunk or mad with rage. Drunk doubtless, yes, I'm drunk and odd, but drunken with the wine of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You need to drink what I'm drinking this festive season, this Christmas season. I'm drinking the, the Chamblay Vesturius. I, I, I'm, drinking, I'm drinking this uh, this uh, Shobrakasta Brambanina Le Broboso Koya. Hallelujah. My mother taught me how to drink it when I was a kid. Hallelujah. My mama. Yo mama. Your mama needs to teach you how to drink this stuff. My mama taught me how to drink it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Well, have you been blessed today? Have you been blessed today? Hey! Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank, I like the Christmas color on your hair. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Some people do this, this, you know, stuff different for Christmas. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. You need to get some Christmas colors in your hair. Amen. Praise God. Just play like that. Play like that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel like this is a divine appointment. I want everybody to bow your heads if you would, please. I want to give an invitation today. If you've come and you fit into any one of these three categories, I want to pray with you and for you. I've often thought of this since the 25th day of December 2002. I've often thought, who will get to hold each person before they go? Will there be someone like there was with me and Kelly to talk her through it, to walk her through it? to pray with her. And then I realized that when I gave an altar call and every time I give an altar call, it's really like it's me and that person. That if there was some way you could just see just you and myself now, I'm talking to you. Forget about everybody else in this place. That if you've come into this place today and you fit in any one of these three categories, I want to pray with you and for you. Maybe you've come here today, you've never given your life to the Lord. You've never said, Jesus, come and be my Lord and Savior. Friend, I want to ask you a question. If today was your last day on the earth, where would you go? Where would you spend eternity? I want you to know there's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. You don't have to go to a devil's hell because 2,000 years ago on Calvary's cross, the price was paid, the blood was shed. And just like that old song said, there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins and sinners plunged beneath that flood lose all the guilty stains the day the power of sin will be broken the power of guilt and shame will be removed from your life you might have come in here one way but you'll leave another way and today he saves you today he sets you free would you surrender to him would you say Lord here I am he loves you he calls you What would happen if today was your last day on the earth? The 
This very day, your life could be required of you. Will you say, Jesus, here I am. I surrender to you today. Maybe you've come into this place, you gave your life to the Lord in days gone by, but you've grown cold. You're not serving God like you should. You've allowed the things of the world to come in. You've lost that peace, that joy, the first love that you once had. The devil's always just coming against you from every side. Maybe it's something hidden that no one can see. Pride, unforgiveness, bitterness, jealousy, anger, lust, the hidden things that come to clog the heart of man. But today you say, I'm coming. Today I'm going to surrender my life afresh. He said, I will take out the stony heart and put in a heart of flesh. He said, a new spirit will I put within you. Will you surrender to him afresh today and say, Lord, here I am. Here I am. Maybe it's not hidden. Maybe it's something that's outward that everyone could see. Everyone can see. The devil uses that against you to keep you in a place of guilt and condemnation. You feel like God will never use you because of events that have transpired in your life. I want you to know that he's the God of a second chance. And will you surrender to him afresh today and say, Lord, here I am. Maybe it's not hidden or outward as we described. Maybe it's a storm that came against your life, a sudden divorce, a bankruptcy, the loss of a loved one, a sudden illness, the betrayal of a close friend, the loss of a job. Something happened that rocked your world. But today you say, I'm coming back. I'm going to fall in love with Jesus all over again. Will you surrender fresh to him today? And then lastly, if you're in this place, you love the Lord, that's not even a question. But as you're seated here today, you say, I'm not sure of my salvation. The devil's always lying to me, telling me that I'm not saved. But today I want to make sure. Today I want to know that I know that I know that I'm a child of God. If this is you, right where you are, if you fit into any one of these three categories, I want to pray with you and for you. Won't you quickly just slip up your hand and say, pray for me. God bless you, 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 God bless you. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, right at the back. Slip it up high and say yes. Slip it up high, God bless you. Yes, 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 yes, God bless you. God bless you, God bless you. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. God bless you. Hands are going up all across this building. Today's your day of salvation. Once you've raised, you can put it down. I want you to look at me now, please. If you, in this section here, you did not raise your hand, but you want to be included in the prayer, I'm going to pray quickly. Put your hand up, say, include me. God bless you. God bless you. Yes. Yes. This section, you didn't raise your hand, want to be included. Put your hand up right now. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. This section, you didn't raise your hand, want to be included. Put your hand up and say, include me. God bless you. Yes. Yes. This section here, you didn't raise your hand, but want to be included. Put your hand up now and say, include me. God bless you. God bless you. I want every person that raised your hand, I want you to stand all across the building. Please stand to your feet. Everyone that raised your hand, stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. We're going to pray. Stand to your feet. Everyone that raised your hand, stand up right now. We're going to pray. I want you to come from where you are. Come fill up the altar area. Come. Come. Come right now. Come right now. Come right now. He calls you. He calls you now. Come. Today is the day of salvation and freedom and deliverance. Don't put it off another day. He calls you now. He calls you now. You come. Today is the day of freedom and liberty. Today the power of sin will be broken off of you. Today your life will be transformed. Not by the hand of man, but by the hand of the Lord. To come now. Come now. I have decided 
to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I want every single one of you standing here just to look at me right now. If you mean business with God, God means business with you. If the Lord can come and touch my friend in January of 96, and I haven't seen him again until now, and God's used him in a major way, what's he going to do with you? How many know that you are born on this earth for a purpose? How many have not seen that purpose come to pass yet? Wave your hand at me. You've not seen that purpose come to pass. What if I told you, if you'll surrender in totality today, that in the remainder of your days, that God will cause that purpose to come to pass? I want you to close your eyes right now. Just raise your right hand to heaven. That's where your help comes from. And pray this together with me. Believe it in your heart and say it with your mouth. Say, Father, I come to you in the precious name of your son, Jesus. Lord, you said in your word, if I confess with my mouth, Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. And I believe in my heart that God has raised you from the dead. I will be saved. So Father, right now, I confess Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. Come into my heart right now. Take out the stony heart. Put in a heart of flesh. Wash me. Cleanse me. Change me. Fill me. Use me. Let me never be the same again. I turn my back on the world. I turn my back on sin. And I follow you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for dying for me. Thank you for shedding your blood for me. And thank you that on the third day you rose for me. And thank you that you're coming back again for me. From this day on, I'll never be the same again. I confess Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. He is my Lord and my Savior. And right now, by faith in the finished work of the cross and by the shed blood of Jesus, I'm born again. I am saved. Thank you, Lord, for saving me now. Now lift your hands right now. Father, I just pray that you would come, that you would seal them by the power of your blood and by the power of your spirit. That on that day, no one would be missing. Raise them up to be mighty men and women of God and use them to impact this generation, we pray. May they take every attack of the enemy and switch it right now. That the devil will pay for what he's done to their life. And through their life, souls will come into the kingdom. We thank you for it. And we praise you for it. In Jesus' name, I never once said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 This program has been brought to you by the friends and partners of Revival Ministries International in Tampa, Florida. For more information on the ministry of Drs. Rodney and Adonica Howard Brown, or for additional resources, visit revival.com. 